so dns or dns right so we'll be talking about dns name resolution so have you ever wondered what happens when you say type uh, a domain name or a website address in your browser how how are you connected to that particular website because the internet works on ip addresses and not names right so dns or the domain name system is that system that actually does a uh, name to ip resolution so this is what is the functionality of a domain name system or a dns right so you can consider it as a big database that consists of name and ip address uh, mapping something like that right so let me get rid of this all right dns actually consists of uh, hier hierarchical entities uh, they are called zones right so zones so at the top you have a root zone that actually has some tlds or the top level domains right then you have the name servers and these name server actually point you to the server you are trying to look for right so this is how the name resolution happens so if you look at this structure this is very similar to the directory structure in your operating system right so you if you talk about linux you have a root directory and then you have say slash etc slash var things like that and inside these you have other directories like config yeah so it's very similar to that all right so most of the time big uh, enterprises like google amazon facebook they don't change their ip addresses like so if you look if you just do a simple host on facebook.com right you will get a set of ips and you would see that these ips will not change i mean very rarely change maybe maybe in few years right so all of these uh, dns requests anytime you actually access facebook.com or google.com these requests are cached at multiple places the first is your browser and then is your resolver which is your isp's dns right so there are multiple places in between also where this request is cached so 90 percent of the time when you hit facebook amazon google the request is actually served from the cache itself because they have the ip address cached in your uh, browser or your resolver the uh, anytime you hit these requests anytime you hit these uh, domains the ip address is returned from the cache right but in this video we'll be talking about uncached uncached request so suppose if i type google.com and this IP address is not cached in my browser's cache or my resolver's cache then how does it happen right so let's start so suppose this is a client machine right and in this I'm trying to access www.google.com right so the first thing obviously it will check the browser cache it's it doesn't find the ip the next request it makes is to the resolver's cache so resolver resolver is your isp dns server right so isp is running some dns server isp is actually run dns servers of their own right so if you look at your resolve.conf you can find the IP address of your uh, uh, ISP's DNS. So the next next, requ next request goes to the resolver's ISP. This is where the actual DNS resolution begins. So suppose if I am accessing google.com, the DNS resolution starts from right to left, right from this. So the first thing, so the resolver, which is the ISP's DNS, it has a program obviously it for dn to run a dns server it must be running some kind of dns service right and this service actually has the list of 13 root servers which are there in the world right so 
there are 13 root servers and these are fixed although if you talk in the technical sense or if you talk in reality there are more than 13 uh, root servers in fact there are a lot many root servers but due to the restriction of the architecture of dns how it was designed only 13 ip addresses are assigned to this right but behind the scene it uses any cast routing to actually do any cast so you hit one of these ips but behind that ip there can be any number of servers that could be serving your request right so in reality there are more than 13 root servers in the world but you will find only these 13 ip addresses so these ip addresses are actually there in the isp's dns uh, server so the first request goes to the root domain root right so root domain is actually represented by a dot so in in even in your browser if you type www.google.com dot you will be taken to google.com so this do dot is not required in the domain name but even if you put it it will do the resolution right so once this resolver it goes to the root domain to look for www.google.com the root server responses it by saying that i am not sure about www.google.com but i can point you to the top level domain which is the .com right so i can point you to the ip address of .com top level domain tld right so now the next request from the isp dns goes to the top level domain which is .com again request for www.google.com it says that i am not aware of the ip address of this but i can point you to the name server which is google.com right so now the next request goes to the name server so anytime if you buy a domain, right, you get a list of name servers, right? And one of those name servers is authoritative name server, which is actually authoritative of responding to the DNS queries, right? And the rest are basically for uh, fallback or you can say fault tolerance, right? So now that the final request goes to the authoritative name server for google.com, which is uh, you can say a zone also so when the request goes to this server this authoritative name server actually has the IP address for www which could be a web server right which is a web server because you get returned a website so now this returns you the IP address of www google.com so once the resolver has this address it actually sends the same to the browser right and it caches this request over here and the browser also caches this request over here so now when you although i mean i'm explaining it uh, while it's taking time to explain this this thing this dns resolution actually takes few milliseconds to complete right this whole procedure of going to the root server or going to the top level domain and then to the name server actually takes very few milliseconds i mean i think you can actually look at that time in your uh, inspect element tab if you go to the network tab and try to hit a website there's a timing uh, tab which is there and you can see it shows the timing for uh, basically name resolution so you can see how quickly the name resolution happens all right so now when you have the ip address you make a connection with that ip address right and then you have tcp handshake and then you, if, if it's an ssl website you have ssl handshake and then you start exchanging data so this is how the dns is actually working right so uh, i think i covered almost 
all of the stuff probably uh, yeah so yeah this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video about dns right although there's there's a lot of good videos already present in the in youtube i ha actually have seen one from computer file which is very good so i mean i tried to be at their level but if if not please feel free to comment and let me know if i can improve but yeah this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching